Hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan coming to you here on July 11th to talk about the July 12th uh, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, I'm making a video. I'm coming out of my hibernation or retirement or whatever you may call it um, just to make a video because we have a big prize pool contest i think it's i believe it's a 20k plus um for the gpp main gpp contest so i thought this would be a good time to uh, make a video and reconnect with you guys um, on this video and talk about this five game slate um but yeah so i am recording a few minutes before i was planning to um, I hope you hope you guys. Uh, I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, I will be recording this and then I'll post it on YouTube for those of you who watch me on YouTube. Uh, before we go any further, please please uh, hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel. Um, Drew DFS uh, provides contents for other sports um, as well, uh, including baseball, um, which will have the second half of the season starting uh, later this week. So that's exciting. Um, but yeah, come join us in the True DFS Discord channel um, for esports, uh, League of Legends, and other esports uh, discussions. Um, we drop and talk about a lot of different types of metrics and nuggets and who we like and who we don't like. Um, it's been very helpful and having, you know, fruitful discussions there. So come join us. All right. Um, so now that you have hit the like button, we are gonna go into each matchup. So as you can see on the screen, I have my notes. Um, I'm gonna go into the playoffs implications as well, because those are important um, and they have a huge impact on these players' performances um, as we approach uh, later. In the summer split, um, we I believe most teams have two or three games left, um, you know, remaining in the season uh, for the summer. And for most teams, um, that really means uh, that's the end of the season, because if you don't make the playoffs here or if you did not qualify for the playoffs, given your performances in the spring and summer split, uh, the end of summer split really is the end of your season um, if you're not going to the Worlds tournament. So given that context, um, let's dive in. LNG versus TT um, is the first matchup in China. Um, we have LNG, a favorite at minus, I believe it used, it was at 540 when I last checked when I posted this, uh, the starters here. I believe it was around six o'clock Eastern time and now five, sure the five, yeah, my math is right. Five hours later, we have um, some money coming in on Thunder Talk, it looks like, um, which I understand. Thunder Talk has been playing pretty well. Um, UCAL especially has been playing really well in the mid lane, probably one of the best mid laners at the moment, um, but LNG, it's also been very good. They're on a they they are on a four game winning streak, whereas Thunder Talk is on a three game winning streak. Um, but I'll talk about all of that um, in my in my eye test portion of this this analysis. But objectively, let's look at the metrics. Um, we have LNG favored and total kills over under uh, is set by Vegas at twenty seven kills. Um, that's fairly high. Um, even for an LPL game. And then LNG, um, as you can see on the CKPM here, um, LNG likes to play a little bit faster than Thunder Talk, um, but they both have pretty good CKPM metrics. So I think the kill pace is going to be good. And I also kind of took a look at, um, you know, what, the, what their trends are like um, on the latest patch. Just given, I feel like the latest patch has had a lot of um, effect on um, the, the game flows and the gameplays for these teams. As you will see, like on the trends here, um, the, the latest patch really has affected all of these teams, including the LCK teams. 
um, making them play a little bit faster than the late uh, than the 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 previous patches really. Um, I'll kind of show you as an example, but LNG and Thunder Tog, I, I believe they were both in like point eight or point nine uh, ranges um, on the latest patch. So that's an interesting observation, I think. Um, that, in other words, for DFS purposes, yeah, I think it's going to be, I think each of these matchups really has a higher kill potential than what the actual CKPM numbers indicate that are for the the entire duration of the summer splits thus far. And then gold spend percentage difference. Um, LNG is has an advantage there at plus six point three percent. Thunder Talk is actually theirs is their GSPD is actually in the negative uh, slightly. Um, which means that they just haven't been a good team. Um, they've been a mediocre, if not below mediocre team um, for the entire, you know, for, for the duration, you know, for the summer split, right? But like I said, they're on a three-game winning streak. So the last three series they played in, their metrics, metri metrics are actually pretty good. But even even then, I, said, I saw that LNG's metrics were still better than Thunder Talk. Uh, Thunder Talks uh, metrics, even in this three series um, winning streak. So, yeah, I, th I think that tells me like LNG has an advantage in, in every single matchup here, um, especially at the 80 carry and the top lane position, just to, statistically. Um, that's what I said here the biggest gaps there in those uh, roles. Um, but yeah, LNG has been playing amazing. I think a lot of people are on Thunder Talk just because UCal has been playing really well and he's been animated like post games and all that, posting a lot of tweets. And, you know, during after the series is over, you catch him on the cameras, you know, get him all excited. Um, but LNG has been quietly very impressive. Um, I do think that's probably one of my biggest exposure is going to be. I think a lot of people are betting on Thunder Talk as an underdog, which I understand just based on the recent form. I think they can really beat anybody. Um, but LNG also has been very, very solid, if not better than Thunder Talk. So um, it's just given that they have a better, better AD carry. Um, and then the jungle, Tarzan has been playing pretty well. Um, so I really like LNG here. Um, but I wanted to show you this. Uh, I talked about the playoffs implication earlier. Um, you see that Thunder Talk here oops, um, at five and nine. They really have to win the next two series um, and then complete this uh, uh, summer split at seven and nine for them to even have a chance to make it to the playoffs um, and as the 10th seed. It's possible. Um, Ninja, uh, NIP, yeah, NIP will probably have to lose out. Um, the rest of the matches, matches maybe 0 to 2, 0 to 2 in both of those series. It's possible, but unlikely. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. And LNG also has a motivation here. I mean, they're on a game, they're on a four game winning streak, like I said, but they also have some motivation here to kind of maintain that position or just for playoff seating purposes, right? Um, and Thunder Talk will not know uh, them playing in the first game today, I think. Let me check that real quick. Yeah. So they're playing in the first game. So Thunder Talk players will not know if NIP, um, you know, basically will lose or win. So I think Thunder Talk will still be motivated to play. I was gonna say if NIP game, if the NIP game was earlier and then NIP wins, maybe Thunder Talk will just like kind of give up um, and inc increase the the kill upside and all that shenanigans, but. I think this is good that it will be controlled. Um, I think Thunder Talk will focus on winning the matchup um, because really the playoffs, I mean, if they lose, they're out. Um, so they have to win. Um, that's the only thing they can control. Um, so I, I think Thunder Talk will try very hard. 
But like I said, LNG has been really good. Like their metrics have been really, really solid. The last four games, they're on a four game winning streak. So we'll see um, if Thunder Talk can put up a fight. But I have LNG winning here tonight. All right. The second matchup in China is Fun Plus Phoenix versus NIP. I mentioned NIP. They are the favorite with the playoffs motivation at minus 196 um, compared to the underdog NFP, NFPX at plus uh, 160. Total kills over under is set at 26, which is the lowest among the four, uh, three Chinese matchups, um, but still pretty high. Um, and like I said, the latest patch really has them playing faster than what the numbers indicate. Um, GSPD, um, both teams are in the negative, so both teams are kind of shit. FPX has been really bad lately, especially they're on, a, you know, the last four games, they're on a four game losing streak. But it has been against tough opponents. I think it, I think it was JDG, BLG. Um, so I think that is, you know, that kind of gives some context. I think their metrics are actually not that bad if you look at them. Um, especially like the jungle EGPM earned gold uh, percentage. Um, earned gold per minute. Um they're even for the summer split um compared to hacker compared to hacker and shadow um but actually hacker has been playing uh much better on the latest patch compared to shadow um which was an interesting observation um and then in the laning phase it's really close like there's not a single like huge advantage um in favor of fpx um, so I really do think this is going to be a close matchup, just like the odds indicate F FPX definitely has, um, what it takes, I think to upset NIP, but NIP will definitely be more motivated, um, to play well tonight because this is, I mean, they really need to win this to, uh, secure their playoff spot as well. Um, I do want to see who they play against next. So let me take a look at that. So I'm thinking maybe if they're going to bank on another matchup, uh, the second matchup left in the season, this is the last matchup. Hmm. Seven and eight. 15 games. Oh. I think they play 16 games, right? Am I tripping? What's going on? Hmm. Let me check something real quick. Sorry, guys. It's not the right place. Okay. Maybe I'll, I'll figure it out later. Um, all right. So anyway, so NIP nonetheless still has the playoffs motivation here tonight. Um, so let me go back to the standings. Oh, there it is. Sorry. So NIP. Yeah. So they do have another game against LNG. Um, stop moving. All right, so I think LNG is going to be a tough matchup. Like I said, um, LNG is beating, probably going to beat Thunder Talk, and then they're playing against NIP. So NIP really probably should win this. I think they're going to go all in to beat FPX here tonight. Um, I do think NIP plays better just based on how Shadow plays. I think they play better um, when they play more freely. I think this pressure of the playoffs maybe is – it might get to them. Um, I, I, I just think it's gonna be a toss up here tonight. Um, I know FPX is on a losing losing streak, but 
it's been against tough opponents. Um, I do think uh, the metrics are closer than what, what I thought initially when I looked at this matchup. Um, Care has been pretty bad, um, but Hacker has been better. Um, Shell Lao, who has been really, really good the last like two, three matches, I think I saw. Um, bottom lane is a question mark. I'm not sure which one has an advantage here. Um, I think I think Votic had technically, like statistically, had some advantages over L LWX, but not anything significant. So I really think this is a toss up, and ha that it having the lowest kill upside just based on the Vegas odds, um, and also based on the CKPM. Um, we'll see if I play any of them. Maybe I will. I don't know. I think this is a question matchup um to target for dfs which means probably lower ownership and all that as well so um all right the next matchup is blg versus rng blg has been the juggernaut the juggernaut in the lpl uh along with jdg um jdg dropped the game like two games ago but blg is still solid i think they're on a seven yeah seven game winning streak um they have two games rem remaining they you know they don't have to win but you know if they, if they win it would be great for them their play their playoff seating purposes on the other hand, RNG has been just up and down and up and down um it is very sad that how much of a downturn that they took. Um, I think Wei has been solid in the earlier half of the summer split, but in the last <laughs> couple weeks, I feel like he just gave up on the team, unfortunately. I mean, they have made the playoffs, or they will most likely make the playoffs. They, they have made the playoffs. Um, but, I mean, they are just a mediocre team, probably just a gatekeeper team. <clears throat> They don't really they don't really have tons to play for. They've secured their spot. I mean, maybe they can go up to like five and six, um, which is like better. I think they maybe skip a game or two. Yeah. Going to round two. So I mean, I guess there is some motivation from the playoff seating purposes, maybe go, you know, advancing to the next round in the playoffs. Um, but I just don't see RNG beating BLG unless BLG has one of those games like the J the one that JDG had. Um, just given that they have secured the playoffs, clinched the playoffs, they have clinched the top two um, seating. What are they gonna do, right? Like, are they gonna just relax a little bit, take a little break, um, just take the series off, which can happen. You you saw that happen to JDG. But I just feel like BLG having seen what happened to JDG and JDG winning yesterday, I think BLG will be excited and motivated to play well here tonight against RNG. And statistically, BLG has a huge, huge advantage in, in every single lane, especially in the top lane for Bin and then Jungle for June. Over Wei, like I said, Wei has not been playing well, um, especially... Just you know, it's given that his teammates have not been performing as as well as uh, he had been um, earlier in the split. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think I think this this one is interesting also because it's directly connected to um, Thunder Talk losing. So let's say Thunder Talk loses up here, right? And then they'll be out of the playoffs. And then NIP is gonna be securing the the playoffs. So is the RNG going to have anything to play for other than the seeding? Uh, probably just for the seeding purposes, really. I mean, after having watched these teams that have the playoffs implications, I mean, it does really affect the players that are playing in the later games, knowing the results of those matchups um, from earlier. So I just think BLG is going to win. Um, I just don't see any other way. RNG. I think BLG is a better team fighting team and better laning team both ways. I feel like RNG doesn't doesn't really have a pathway to upset BLG, maybe through the mid lane. But even then, I mean, I think Yagao has been playing pretty solid the last couple couple weeks, rather. Um, I think Yagao has been the reason why they've been um, a big factor and why they had 
you know, a seven game winning streak. So we'll see what happens. I think they want to maintain, they want to finish first in the summer split, I think, um, over JDG, which is crazy to talk about. Um, so I like BLG here tonight. I don't know how much I'm going to have RNG of, but we'll see. Um, so, and the kill upside is really, really good. Really good. Um, you see the CKPMs are really high. Total kills over under is at 28, which is the highest among the LPL or on the slate rather. <laughs> so, um, and they also both play faster um, on the latest patch. So yeah, BLG is in a smash spot um, unless they get complacent like JDG the other day um, and it can happen. So all right, in the LCK, it's Sandbox versus D plus Kia. D plus Kia is a huge favorite as they deserve it. Uh, deserve <laughs> very well deserved. Um, total kills over under is set at twenty four. Um, this is this one is a little bit faster uh, kill ups uh, and high has a higher kill upside compared to the next matchup in the LCK for Gen G. Um, so D plus Kia is in a good spot. Um, they have an advantage in every single uh, metric that I saw, except for the lane control percentage. But even then, on the later patch, um, you saw I see that D plus Kia has an advantage on the latest patch over Lift Sandbox. So D plus Kia really has an advantage in every single lane, uh, especially in the mid lane. Showmaker has been lights out the last um, on this latest patch, rather. And then the top lane, Kana, has been playing very well. And then Jungler, um, Canyon, has been playing very well as well. Um, so I really do think D plus Kia should win this. And I want to show you the standings here as well. D plus Kia had been struggling a little bit. They were down here, and then they've come up with a two-game winning streak. They really can um, maintain this spot. And I really do think that they are in the top three um, a top three team, maybe top four team. Um, T1's been struggling without Baker. I do think Genji has, and KT have been have been the top two teams by far. Um, I do think D plus Kia obviously needs to, you know, will make the playoffs out of the LCK. I think they they are better than HLE, given HLE is going through their own uh, jungling uh, issue there with uh, Clid versus Grizzly. So I do think D plus Kia really um, should solidify themselves in that three spot. Um, I do think it starts here against Sandbox tonight. Sandbox, on the other hand, is on a different downturn. Um, five game losing streak. Um, Teddy, you know, having joined the summer split for the team. Um, trying to replace Prince. <laughs> um, after Prince went to LCS. I think Sam Sandbox... Had some potential earlier in the split um, that I saw, but Teddy is not the solution. Um, really, I just don't see them winning here tonight. I think D plus Kia really should win. And then Gen G, I didn't even go into these metrics here because I saw them and they were by, by like double digits uh, by far um, superior uh, advantages for Gen G. Um, and I want, but I wanted to still measure the kill upside. Like is is Gen G still worth playing for DFS purposes with good kill upside, good points? I don't know because um first of all, Vegas odds are set at 23, which is the lowest among the five games on the slate. And then the CKPM is lower compared to the other matchups as well, which tells me that Gen G is probably gonna run away with this uh this game against Notion Red Plus. I don't think um no Notion Red Force is going to force any issues to increase the Gen G's kill upside, which can happen. Uh, but still, like, Gen G doesn't really like to play that fast, um, just given looking at that 0 0.70. And even with that um, latest patch um, upside, you see here, I think it was at 0 0.81 for Gen G, which is a little bit higher than what, you know, their summer split long uh, CKPM is, but still, that's still lower than most, I guess, all the teams, really, that are on the slate. So 0.81 on this latest patch. I wanted to show it to you for Sandbox and D plus Kia, kind of compare them as well. Um, Genji and Notion. So this is the latest patch CKPM. 
I mean, you see that Genji is still is the lowest by a good margin here. So I just don't think it's a good kill upside game. I think Genji is probably going to win like 15 to 0 and then like 15 to 5 or 14 to 5 or something like that. So I will probably have Genji like in the team slot maybe just to differentiate uh, my GPP lineups, but I just don't see them score very well compared to other matches here tonight. So yeah, I think that's all I got for you guys today. I know this video was a little bit longer um, because of the playoffs implications and um, and some closer matchups that I believe you know will be closer just given the playoffs implications, but also the metrics that we like to look at. But if you enjoyed the video, um, if you enjoyed um, watching this video, please, please, please hit the like button below. Um, it will make me and my son very happy um, and then also motivate me to make more of these videos. Otherwise, yeah, good luck out there. It's a big GPP pool tonight. Um, so I hope you guys, one of one of you guys or one of the subscribers takes it down tonight. And then, yeah, please, uh, please shout out at DFS Chan. Um, if you have any questions before the slate, uh, I'll ha I'm happy to, you know, answer any questions. Um, and yeah, chat League of Legends. It's fun. Bye-bye.